Hello. Listen, we did a survey recently and we got some input from you folks on what you would like to hear more about. And I got a big old long list here. There's what it looks like. That's, that's your response right there. All these subjects right here. At the very top of this list is subject to deals. So I thought I'd take a couple of minutes this week and talk to you about subject to deals. What are they? How do they work? What's the upside? What's the downside? So maybe you could understand it. So let's get started on that. And I am winging it here. I have no preparation whatsoever except 35 years. All right. There are only two ways for you to take over a debt. You can assume the loan or you can take it over what we call subject to. When you assume the loan, that means you've got to make an application to the bank, qualify and get approved and accept the liability for the debt. That would be a no-no, absolute no-no. I don't want to catch you doing that. That's no different than going to the bank and, and, and applying for a loan. So we do not assume loans. In fact, if you look at your purchase and sale agreement on your Gold Club site under resources, it clearly says that when we're taking over a debt, it says we're taking it over subject to. Subject to means we're buying the house subject to the underlying debt. Means taking it over, but not assuming it. Loan stays in seller's name. Seller's fully aware loan stays in seller's name, and they will sell and sign a CYA letter, which is also on your Gold Club site, in front of an attorney fully disclosing that they understand the loan stays in their name and that the bank could call the loan due. Anytime a loan transfers, the bank can call the loan due. They probably won't, but they could, so the seller needs to be told that. So subject to means the seller just goes to a closing, signs the deed and the closing statement that your attorney prepares and hands them to your attorney and leaves. There's no nothing to do with the bank. There's no application with the bank. I don't even get the bank to send me any information. I get the loan balance from either the seller's paperwork or we call their voicemail box, uh, uh, we call the bank's voicemail box using the seller's social security number and loan number and we can get the information right from that on how much is owed and whether it's current and such. But the seller always has paperwork and what their payment is, the breakdown, principal interest, taxes and insurance and um, that's why well, you just get that when you go to the house and you pretty much know what the loan balance is. I don't have to know the exact balance the day I close because it's kind of moot anyway as long as I'm pretty close and uh, it's going to change every day but honestly contacting the bank to get all these fine new details just uh, I, don't, I don't I've never did see the, the purpose of it. I got what I need to know what's owed and is it current and how much of it's PITI. So when a seller deeds you the property and walks away you've taken title subject to that's an internal slang word. That's not something you ever want to mention to the seller. They will not know what you're talking about. So you always will say, well, I'm going to take over your debt and make your payments until sometime in the future when the loan is paid off. You're never going to say, well, I'm going to buy your house subject to. No, that means absolutely nothing. Now, there's a difference between subject to and a wraparound mortgage or an all-inclusive deed of trust. If you're in a mortgage state, you could buy the same house with a wraparound mortgage. If you're in a deed of trust state, you could buy it with a wraparound deed of trust or an AITD, which is an all-inclusive trust deed. Now all that means is that the attorney creates a new document from your land trust, which will buy the house, to the sellers saying your land trust owes the sellers X number of dollars for X number of months with X number of principal and interest. Many times I'll have my attorney create a wraparound mortgage to the seller for the exact same amount that they owe instead of taking it subject to, and I'm about to tell you why. If my attorney creates a wraparound mortgage for the same amount the seller owes, the seller's got no money coming now or ever. I simply make the payment directly to the bank, but there's still a recorded document saying my land trust owes the seller X number of dollars and there's, here's the reasons why. If your seller sells it to you subject to and walks away, there's two things that you need to consider for their benefit. Honestly, it's 
just as well for you to buy it subject to is to buy it on a wraparound mortgage, but let's look at it from the seller's point of view, because you should. If the seller just deeds it to you and walks away and you do not make the payments, they have absolutely no recourse. They can't foreclose because you don't owe them anything. Remember, you took over their mortgage and started making payments. There's no document that says you owe them anything on a subject to deal. So there's nothing they can do. They're placing their credit in your hands and there's no way to get the property back if you don't pay. In a wraparound mortgage, your land trust owes them the same amount they owe. So if those payments aren't getting made, if they wanted to, they could foreclose on your land trust because it owes a debt to them. So they have a debt instrument stating that they owe, are owed money and now they can foreclose to get the house back if you don't pay that money. So let me recap. On a subject to deal, they have absolutely no recourse. On a wraparound mortgage, they can take it back if you don't pay. Secondly, if a seller deeds you the house subject to and walks away, whatever that monthly payment is, is going to stay showing on their credit report. Remember, the loan stays in their name either way here. The wraparound mortgage just wraps around the underlying debt, but the loan is going to stay in their name until you pay that wraparound off. But if the seller wants to go get another loan to buy another house, it's going to be very difficult for them because they have no income showing to wash out that debt. So if the seller is paying $2,000 a month on a payment and you take it over subject to, that $2,000 is going to go toward their debt and they can't show any income, it's probably going to mess up their debt ratio and keep them from qualifying. Now the good news is, most people who will sell you a house subject to are not going to go qualify for another loan anyway, but if you think they are, then buy it with a wraparound mortgage or a wraparound deed of trust, and if you do that, now they have a recorded document showing that they are receiving the same amount that they're paying. Their, the payment that you're making them, or your land trust is making them, is the same as the one they're paying. So it should wash on their debt ratio. Now, lenders sometimes will not give them credit for an incoming payment until they've been collecting it about a year, but just the same, it's better that they can show they got it coming in than they can't, from a seller's point of view. So uh, either way, the seller's putting their credit in your hands and if you don't make the payments, it will affect their credit. So that's the difference between a subject to and a wraparound mortgage. Um, if your seller could care less, I'll take it subject to. If your seller's credit is already destroyed, I'll take it subject to. If it's already behind on payments, that means the credit has already been dinged. I'll just take it subject to. So the long and the short is, if the seller don't care, I don't care. I just soon take it subject to. I do several a year subject to. But if I think I'm going to have a problem later because the seller didn't understand what they were doing when they needed it subject to, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it on a wraparound mortgage. And I won't even have this discussion with the seller. I'm not going to give them a choice. I'm just going to tell my attorney I want to buy it on a wraparound mortgage and that's the way I'm going to fill out the contract. And basically I'm doing that just to keep head off any problem later you know, when the seller realizes that they don't have any recourse whatsoever if I don't pay. So, you can take advantage of the seller's lack of knowledge or you can go ahead and do something today to fix a problem later and just buy it with a wraparound mortgage. I will almost always choose the latter. But again, there's many cases where I just take it over subject to. So, I hope that clears up subject to versus wraparound mortgage for you. And again, it's going to be case by case on which one you choose. But please do not forget the seller's interest here. Make sure you take care of the seller while you're doing this. You are not going to buy it in either one of these ways unless you intend to make the payment, but put yourself in the seller's position and when you feel the need, uh, buy it on a wrap rather than on a subject to. So, I hope that makes the case. See you soon.